Hello and welcome to this SiteGround webinar. My name is uh, Christophe Jarf, I'm manager of WordPress initiatives at SiteGround. And here with me is Nikolai Tolerov. He's been working uh, uh, for SiteGround for more than 15 years. He's our CTO. Hello everyone. Nice to have you here today in this session. Uh, before we start, a few things. Um, because uh, we understand there's more of 3,000 people uh, registered for this webinar, uh, there will be a recording of this, and it will be available a few minutes after the end of the webinar in the Crowdcast platform, and we will later update, upload the video in our YouTube profile. Uh, in addition to that, um, there are a lot of questions already. I'm sure there'll be a lot more. Uh, we will try to answer to as many of them as possible, but uh, for the ones we won't have enough time. There will be a blog post that we'll release uh, shortly after the webinar in the coming days. And in it will answer to all of your questions that we haven't live. Uh, let's, let's, let's start right away. Um, the topic obviously is the new client area, the new site tools. Um, I think that uh, it would be best if you can tell us more about what's so exciting, what's, what's the new thing uh, that uh, we want to, we will be talking about basically now. Uh, okay, like uh, three years ago, um, we were thinking and uh, there were a lot of business and technical reasons why we, which led us to the decision that we have to rework and redesign our client area and the, our site management tools. Uh, one of the most important reason was though, uh, is that uh, we wanted to make our product more uh, website centric instead of a hosting centric. What does this mean? Well, during the past years, uh, we've, we've saw that uh, our customers are mostly care about their websites instead of their web hosting accounts as a whole. So uh, that is why uh, we wanted to accommodate this, uh, this, uh, this requirement from our customers and we rework all our interfaces so that all user interaction flows are mostly focused on the website instead of the hosting. And this resulted in a lot of benefits for our customers, like it made it more easier to start a new website or to manage multiple websites. And even this added more security and performance to our tools and, and, the, and customers' websites. And we, were, we even created some brand new features, great features like the collaborators and site ownership transfer. Uh, let's, let's talk about um, of, uh, these individual uh, improvements. Um, what, what's the benefit? How, it, how we've made it uh, better for people, let's say, who want to start a new website? Well, when you get in the client area, everything starts with the website. The, the hosting accounts uh, is put aside behind the scene and starting a we new website, the process is much clearer and easier. Uh, with, a hit of, with a hit of a button, uh, you choose whether to start a new website from scratch or whether you want to migrate for uh, an existing website. Then you pick your domain name. Uh, you can use an existing one or you can register a new one. And another new thing is that you can select to to use a temporary URL created by SiteGround and you can use it during the development of your website. And later on, you can easily change it to an, an actual domain name when you are ready to go into production. And as I said, the, the process is very clear and straightforward. So it's much better than before where uh, people used to do things like use local host file, uh, do a subdomain, then point it to your account. Now with the temporary domain name, all that uh, they don't have to do it. Yeah, they can develop and then switch to switch to the live domain name. And um, can you, can you tell our viewers more about uh, the things we've done for for the people who manage more than one website? So we had a lot of customers that had, let's say, one GoGeek account and a number of other uh, websites under it. Well, now, uh, there is no such thing as add-on domains uh, any longer. Uh, now, every website, uh, no matter whether under the same account or, uh, or the websites share different or are under different accounts, every single website comes with its own set of title, site tools. Uh, this, uh, 
this uh, adds uh, much more uh, this has much more simplification when managing multiple websites and every webs and also adds more security to the websites because they are now fully isolated from each another so so yeah historically we were the first to introduce uh, proper account isolation on a share hosting environment and this sounds like like the next logical step isolating one website from from another yeah this wasn't possible before and uh, as you know we we had been using uh, cpanel since since the beginning and uh this is actually cpanel why i introduced the, the term add-on domain and uh anyway as cpanel has been a reliable and great great friend of ours uh, for so long time uh but it, it is designed uh, to accommodate the needs of all of any hosting company out there and naturally this started to add more overhead and this uh, was slowing us down into innovating and creating new features for our customers and um, we had to develop a lot of tools uh, on our own that we needed the most in cPanel and, the, and has been always uh, like a step ahead uh, of them for example, like maybe three months ago, they they contacted me and they asked if we would want to to test to beta test their nginx integration. Uh, but we didn't really need that because we have already integrated nginx into our uh, cPanel four years ago. So this uh, it wasn't uh, it was a no uh, it it was an easy decision that we. We needed uh, a new new control panel, a new platform that is uh, that is designed to perfectly fit our exact needs. That uh, that is developed the exact way that we want wanted it to be. So, for example, now we can do things like the new collaboration feature that that wasn't that was wasn't possible for us to do before, right? Yeah, exactly. The the uh, we needed some uh, new features for, as, as you said, the collaboration feature. Uh, we, we were examining the behavior of clients and we saw that more agency uh, develop more agencies developers or people who just manage websites for others uh, they're using our products so we saw that uh, very that uh, proper collaboration tools uh, uh, would be a great benefit for those uh, for those uh, people for the agency who, who now can uh, give access to their uh, team members access to websites of their websites of, of their customers websites sorry and uh without like uh with limited access so they have access only to the site sites not the emails and things that so, are not so okay, don't so. don't spoil everything okay yeah sorry uh, i already <laughs> see that we have a number of people asking uh, i'm starting for the screencast right away i'm going to walk you through all all the exciting new stuff that we have built and just let me enable our screen share uh, okay um, this is the new uh, is the new client area and uh, as you can see it's completely redesigned uh, although it's not just a mere redesign it's the it looks much better and we have done a lot of uh, a lot of uh, work uh, in order to make it um, user friendly uh, to make it work great on any device uh, for example i will quickly switch to my mobile view and as you can see you can easily scroll through all the all the content it, everything looks much better than our previous interfaces and uh, the idea behind this was to be able to access all the tools and functionalities without uh, without worrying whether you're on your iphone or you're on your ipad um, right now we're having a limited time hosting offer um, if you need new hosting feel free to benefit from it but generally in the top screen you will see uh, information regarding your particular account uh, features new stuff everything that we're introducing is going to be featured there um besides uh, beside uh, the uh, much much improved interfaces uh, what nikolai said in the beginning uh, the new thing is the website centric uh 
philosophy that we are introducing. As you can see, the first the first tab in the new client area is the websites tab. And here you have all the websites that you have installed, no matter how many accounts you have. Uh, this is, this is uh, where we believe you'll be spending um, most of your time and easily finding the website you actually want to work on rather than a hosting account. Uh, hosting accounts are under the services tabs uh, and your domains too. And um, we've done our best to make this, make them manageable uh, again, as easy and flexible as possible. For example, here's a cool feature. Uh, if you have more than one account and there, let's say you have uh, five GoGeek plans and you wonder which one is where, you can go to manage your account and change its name and uh, select a random name like webinar account, for, for example. Then when you go back to the list of your websites, uh, you will see all the websites that are hosted under that account. Um, Right now, for the purpose of this webinar, I have only one account added to this client. Uh, otherwise, you would see uh, all the websites that I have across all my accounts. Um, another uh, great improvement uh, towards simplicity and, again, security is uh, the single login we introduce. Uh, from, from your SiteGround uh, client area, mysiteground.com, you can access right away all your websites. You don't have to worry about remembering and storing uh, separate uh, passwords for each in, um, account you have. Of course, we've uh, added uh, two-factor authentication, so uh, you are, uh, secure. your logins are secure. Uh, I haven't enabled it for this account, again, for the sole purpose of the webinar. Another interesting thing in the client area is the notification preferences. Uh, you can choose uh, which news to opt in for and uh, what messages to receive from us. In addition to that, in case there is something urgent, uh, you have an expiring services or there is an issue with any of our servers, you can opt in to receive a text message directly to your, to your uh, mobile phone. Um, Another thing, since we are changing a lot of interfaces, moving a lot of buttons around, we understand that even though we believe it's much better and much more intuitive to work with the new SiteGround client area, um, you may wonder how to do this or that. That's why we've designed something um, that we call uh, related help articles or get quick help. Uh, if you press the question mark button, this is, this is where we've placed the, let's say the new help center. Uh, you will see uh, right there uh, a selection of uh, articles regarding the exact page you're on. For example, uh, here you can see articles about how to disable notifications and switching uh, your phone number to receive uh, text messages. If I go to the websites tab, those articles will switch to how to create a website, what is Citus, etc., etc. If you click on one of them, you can see the information you need right away without having to navigate to a different, let's say, knowledge base or a tutorial. That said, our help center uh, has a uh, completely reworked list of articles uh, regarding each and every aspect of the hosting um, product that you may have questions for. Our tutorials uh, are too uh, reworked. And here is where you can contact our support team. Again, the flow is very similar to what you have been used to, but uh, improved in terms of interfaces and ease of use. Another uh, thing I want to go through is the statistics, because now they're split in, uh, in two parts. All the stats and information that you need regarding your web hosting account and resource uh, usages it has are under the services accounts uh, tab. In, st in the statistics section, you will see information about yours, all the sites you have under this account and the usage they're causing to your, uh, to your in our case, GoGeek plan. Uh, you can see that uh, 
uh, we have summarized and uh, combined all the installations. For example, for this webinar, I've created just two simple WordPress installations, and they consume uh, a number of inodes and a number of uh, megabytes of web space. The same goes for uh, program executions and CPU seconds. Um, I'm sorry that my stats here are empty, but again, it's a testing account for, for the webinar. Um, another uh, part of the, of the new collaboration features that we have developed, it's uh, something uh, called site ownership transfer. For example, if you are using your uh, SiteGround account to build websites for other people, and when you finish your project, if you want to transfer it away to, to a different person, you can quickly do this without having to worry about um, about moving content around files, databases, and so on. Uh, this is another another uh, way Cytus really helps us and unties our hands to do things like this. Uh, you go to the management screen of your website and just go to transfer ownership. Uh, here you can type the name and email of the person you want to invite as a new owner of, of that website and then recommend them uh, what you believe is the appropriate hosting plan for them. For example, if they, if it's a single site, they may need just a Grobic, not a Gogic account. We can recommend things like dedicated IP addresses to site scanners and uh, so on. Uh, feel, uh, feel free to uh, recommend to your customers whatever you believe it's important and necessary for them. So, uh, now, after we've been through through the main things, the main changes in the uh, in the client area, let's let's go right to the site tools. This is the main uh, main uh, dashboard screen of site tools. Um, I want to quickly show you a few very very useful tips about the about uh, about it that I believe will help your workflows. First is something called uh, pin tools. Here you can choose the, uh, the tools that you use most uh, in your day-to-day -day work with your website and quickly pin them to the, to the dashboard. By doing this uh, on a later stage, you can quickly access them um, right from the main screen of, of your site tools. Uh, once you do this, it's saved for all of your um, for all of your sites under that client area. Um, if you have more than one website, it's very easy to switch between them. Uh, you just go to the drop down box on the top left part of the screen and switch to to a website. What is uh, very convenient here is that, for example, if you have opened the file manager, if you switch back to the first website. Uh, site tools will lead you directly to that to that location, uh, which which takes me to another really nice tool, which is called the Tool Finder. You can access it by clicking the uh, link in the left column, or using a key combination of Control plus K. Um, this doing this will take you right to the tool you're searching for. For example, if I type in email, I will go right to the email accounts. File manager, and I'm right there. Again, very easy and very intuitive way to navigate between the tools. If you wonder where we have placed something, although we have done our best to group it logically into sections that I will go through later on, uh, this, is, this is really, really nice way to find what you're looking for and uh, i that's that's all regarding the navigation in site tools um let's uh, quickly go through through the left column as you can see we have grouped the tools and features in categories and the first one is the site category um under it we've uh, placed uh, basically the tools you need to modify the files and databases uh, that you may have for that website, starting with the completely new file manager. Uh, as you can see, it's a brand new interface. It's built by us and it allows you to 
manage your files and folders under your account. You will notice a difference, and some of you already actually asked about this in our previous blog post, uh, where uh, whether it's, uh, it's possible to access the main home folder for your account. Uh, no, this is something that we've done. Uh, with, this is something we have changed how it works in order to achieve better account isolation. And uh, this is how uh, having a different uh, set of site tools per different website makes it uh, makes things like this work in a in a slightly different way. Uh, here you will only see the files and folders for your um, website that you're currently browsing. If you want to go uh, and modify the content of another website, you can do this by switching to the site to instance for that. Uh, this is um, really, again, I want to stress on the fact that we've done this uh, in order to isolate one website from another. Uh, we Unfortunately, we've had too many people uh, having high number of add-on websites uh, under the same account. A lot of them were even under the public HTML folder, uh, which uh, caused another set of issues, let's say, with your SEO, for example. But um, the main reason we did this is because um, if one of the add-on slots, what we, what a lot of people were used to use, uh, gets hacked, then the attacker could get access to all of your website. But this way, even if you have a website that has, let's say, uh, an application that is not updated or a plugin that is an old version and it gets compromised, you can be sure that the rest of your website are safe and sound. The same reason is behind us removing the direct access from your email files. Uh, there is an IMAP protocol that's very safe and fast to use if you want to move emails around but it's not okay if uh, somebody hacks your website and then they get access to your emails where you share stuff like banks accounts, photos, and and so on. Uh, this said, uh, the new the new file manager has a lot a lot to show. For example, a brand new um, editor. If I go and open open a PHP file, for example, you will see that it looks and feels much better uh, than what we previously had. With proper uh, syntax highlight, uh, you can quickly scroll through through different parts of your code. There are uh, things like uh, the ability to uh, copy paste between uh, from one file manager then to uh, the file manager of your other websites. Uh, you can open a uh, number of files and then switch uh, between the tabs on top of the on top of the editor and then uh, if you want to go back to the list of your files and folders you can switch between you can switch to explorer mode uh, you can do things like uploading downloading websites um, initially when we started uh, develop when we launched the file manager uh, we have the limitation of 128 megabytes of files of a single file that you can upload um, because generally yes it is a better practice to uh, use ftp and ssh to do uh, big file uploads but uh, we've noticed that our customers like the file manager very much they use it a lot to upload things like database dumps archives of complete websites and so on so we are right now working on um, on completely removing that limitation. So we will make it available to uh, upload files that are um, basically without any limitation, uh, except of course, of your account uh, disk space that you have at your disposal. The rest of the account of the tools in the, in the site section are um, the FTP accounts, uh, which is, um, uh, something you're used to working with, uh, but with much better and improved interface and uh, the app manager. Uh, the app manager allows you to quickly install different set of applications and then to manage them. A um, few great things here. Um, if, you ha if the application allows it, uh, we'll allow you to log into the admin panel of that application right away from here. And I would recommend if you're trying a script out, if you want to delete an application, do it from here, do it for the app manager because it will take care of things like um, 
uh, your database, so you no, so so you won't have any leftovers for all the applications uh, you have tried uh, during your web development process. Um, next thing is the MySQL tool. Here, um, I will I will tell you a bit more. Um, the first change that you will notice right away is the database creation process. Um, when you create a create a database, it's that's literally done with a single click. Um, once you do that, we generate the name of, of your database. It's randomly randomly generated name, and again, this is something we have done with the sole purpose of security. Uh, I know that if you have more databases, it may be a bit difficult for you to uh, figure out which one of your databases is used in which application. That's why we have added the ability for you to add labels. For example, I will name this database webinar, and then I will be able to uh, quickly recognize it, for example, when I add users to that database. Uh, in the remote tab, Again, a familiar functionality that uh, you, you used to have. Uh, you can here allow external servers to link to your databases. And of course, the PHP MyAdmin tool that um, a lot of people use on a daily basis uh, is here in the MySQL manager. The PostgreSQL basically uh, has the same functionality for your PostgreSQL databases. Let's switch to the security tab. Um, first, the backups. Um, depending on your hosting plan, you have a number of backups available for you to create instantly. This is very useful in case um, you're planning some big update to your website um, or whatever modification you can create and name uh, manual uh, instant backups. And of course, you can restore from all the system backups we have generated for you. Since again, this is a brand new account we've created for, for the webinar, you can see uh, that there is only one copy, but uh, of, uh, usually we store your data 30 days back. Uh, here, for example, is how the restoration of files and folders look like. You can choose which folders you want to restore. For example, uh, only the public, the www folder, and exclude the temporary and all the uh, system ones. And you have the options what option whether to restore those in a separate folder or have them replacing your current files. Another uh, functionality here is to restore your databases. Again very straightforward very easy to use uh, functionality and of course the ability to restore emails now in the second tab if you had any restoration you would see uh, all the restores you've done in the past 14 days the next two uh, that i believe you appreciate is something that we have originally developed for cpanel but it's revamped uh, again a better interface and uh, uh, straightforward use. Uh, this is the SSL manager. Here you can see a list of all your domain names and uh, you can with a single click install a Let's Encrypt certificate or wildcard Let's Encrypt certificates. In addition to that, you can choose to install one of our premium uh, SSL certificate, certificates in case your business needs it. Um, one thing I want to mention here, um, if, you, if you're using a regular Let's Encrypt certificate, uh, you can uh, point your domain name to SiteGround only via a, a record. You don't need to point, change the name servers, but if you want to use the wildcard one, the uh, name servers has have to be pointed to SiteGround. This is a Let's Encrypt uh, uh, requirement, and we can't really uh, go around it. On the bottom, you will see all the active certificates that you have. Uh, for example, since I have a wildcard certificate, you will see uh, domain lists. Uh, this is a list of domains to which the certificates you have apply to. Since that's a wildcard, you can see that it's valid for my subdomain too. Uh, you don't need to worry about the renewal of SSL certificates. This is something that we do uh, automatically. And uh, you shouldn't worry that uh, you'll have expired ones. 
Now, once you have a certificate installed for your account, you can use the next tool in the security tab called HTTPS Enforce. Um, this tool is used when uh, you have an application that either doesn't natively easily support um, HTTPS configuration or if you have some issues um, uh, configuring it to use your SL certificate. Uh, here you can simply activate the HTTPS enforce and it will, and our system will automatically redirect all the, tra all the traffic towards that website through HTTPS. Um, external links rewrite uh, is uh, on a separate toggle because um, in certain cases, um, if, if you rewrite um, resources that are not on your own domain name, and for example, if that resource um, doesn't have a certificate, this may lead to insecure content warnings. So make sure that once you try this, uh, once you enable these functionalities, you um, always check your, um, your website thoroughly. Uh, I will quickly go through the next uh, couple of um, tools, protected URLs and block type is. Um, they are, again, something that we previously had uh, with the main difference is that here you can choose a domain name from the list of domains that you have and let's say uh, password, protect, uh, password protect them or limit uh, an IP access to them. Uh, before, uh, that functionality used to work per folder basis which um, had the possibility to introduce a lot of errors because um, those rules were uh, working recursively. And for example, blocking an IP address for your uh, home folder affected all your add-on domains. And this is uh, something that confused people. Uh, right now, I believe it's much better and cleaner. Uh, the site scanner is uh, one of the premium features that we offer to our customers. Uh, if you have ordered it um, for your account, you will see the site scanner menu. Uh, we do, um, basically we do um, uh, on a schedule, uh, regular scans for your account for, for, of your website for malware and send you a notice um, if we find something uh, suspicious, uh, any modified files, any malware, Again, a great tool to let you know if there is a problem with your website so you can quickly react and clean it. Um, if you have any suspicions that something has happened, uh, you, can, uh, you can right away start uh, the force scan button, which will, um, which will um, basically run the scan immediately and you will see the results. Right now, as you can see, I have no threats found. Now, Next is uh, the speed, uh, the speed section where we can see uh, again a familiar Cloudflare uh, integration and uh, the page for our caching system. We still provide three layers of caching: static caching, dynamic caching, and object caching with Memcached. Uh, however, under the hood, we've done a lot of improvements here, and we plan to add even more improvements. Uh, on the way static cache, dynamic cache, memcached do work. Um, something uh, important for those of you who have dynamic cache and available on their hosting plan is that you no longer need to add your application here and enable it for your website. If your plan supports it, all you need to do is tell your application uh, to start using it. Uh, we have plugins ready for WordPress and for Joomla. You just need to enable those and start using them. Memcached, the difference here is that now Site Tools allows us to use the default Memcached port. Uh, we don't have to randomly generate a new port for each client. Again, something that proper account, proper website isolation allows us to do. Um, nothing new in terms of the way your application works with it. You simply need to install our um, our uh, plugin for WordPress, uh, uh, Joomla has it as a native support. Many other applications have object caching and memcached support natively. So uh, your it should be easier for you to use it since it's running on the default port. As I mentioned, applications and WordPress multiple times, um, oh, we have a separate section. Uh, first is the install and, man in and manage section. 
Here you can have new WordPress installations, uh, quickly install WooCommerce, and manage your applications. Um, few useful functionalities here. You can do things like uh, change the admin password right away, uh, fix uh, files and folders permissions if you want to, or move your application to a different folder, subdomain, whatever you may need. Um, last but not least, the delete application functionality. If you're testing something, I always recommend you not just to go delete your files, but to use this button, to use this functionality because it takes care of everything associated with the app. The staging tool, uh, again, something um, the, our GoGeek users are familiar with. I will not go into too much detail because it works the way uh, it was before as the migration tool. Uh, moving from another hosting company to SiteGround has never been simpler. Uh, you just uh, generate a token to move a website to your main site or to a subfolder, for example, into blog. And then with the SiteGround migrator plugin for WordPress, you just paste that token and start a transfer. We'll take all your data, files, databases, move it over, if you're changing the domain name for your WordPress installation, we're going to update that too, so you don't have to worry about it. And again, really, I believe this is uh, the easiest way to move a uh, WordPress website from any other hosting company to SiteGround. The auto-update feature, something available to all of you. Um, being a managed WordPress host, uh, this is one of the functionalities we believe um, are mandatory for everyone. Everyone should be using um, WordPress. The WordPress core, should, you should always use the latest WordPress core version. And um, however, uh, we recognize the fact that there are major and minor releases. So for example, if you're worried that a piece of your functionality may have issues uh, because of a major update and you want to uh, check how it behaved beforehand, we can switch to have an up to 72 hours delay to that. And um, for minor releases by default, we'll update them automatically. The toggle to update plugins uh, tells our system whether you want all your free plugins updated by default when a new WordPress version is released. Now, uh, what makes our system better than the default uh, functionality in WordPress is the fact that um, we do backups before each update. So you can quickly switch to the latest, uh, you can quickly restore from the latest backup you have. For example, since uh, today there was a WordPress security release, uh, I, um, I can see that there is a backup uh, which our system has created right before the new, uh, right before it updated me to the latest version. And if something goes wrong, I can quickly restore uh, from that version. Um, enough about WordPress. Um, the domain section, I will click uh, again. I will not um, um, spend too much time. Park domains, if you want to have multiple domain names opening this particular website, you can park your domains there. Um, the subdomains folder. The subdomains tool allows you to have subdomains uh, created right away to delete the subdomains. And uh, if you need a wildcard subdomains, which is something, for example, our WordPress multi-site users uh, often need, uh, you can enable it again from, from this tool. Uh, the redirect has only um, basically improved uh, interface and easy to use functionality, but uh, uh, I will not spend too much time on it. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. Uh, the DNS zone editor is another tool we have uh, created um, in a way that we believe is easiest to use. Uh, you can choose all the domain names. Uh, you have uh, your main one, and if you have any park domain names, and modify the different type of records that they have. Uh, that, that you may want to use. For example, if you want to point your uh, mail server to Google, you can update the MX records for that particular domain name. Uh, talking about emails, um, the accounts tool, uh, 
has uh, all the functionality that you need to create an email and manage email accounts. Um, you can create new ones right away. And for existing ones, you can do things like uh, log into their webmail right away from, from this button, change the password, change uh, the quota uh, to be able to accommodate more emails under that account or get the mail configuration for your preferred email application or if you want to manually configure it to get the settings you need to use. Of course, if you want to delete an email account, you can do it right away from here. Um, forwarders, autoresponders, filters and authentication uh, are um, tools um, that you will find very, very familiar. Uh, I will not go through each one of them because it's improved interface, but no big change in terms of functionality. Um, I will briefly go through spa the Spam Experts tool. This is a third party service uh, that we use uh, from our partners in order to battle spam. And from here, you can access um, your Spam okay. Experts account right away. Um, next is the Statistics tab. Here is the second part of the stats that um, uh, that you have at your disposal. Uh, if you remember, I started our uh, screencast with the client area and the stats regarding the entire account. Now here you can see the information about the particular individual website. Um, things like traffic summary, audience, where your, where your visitors are from, um, what sources uh, they came from, what uh, pages they browsed, and uh, things like the operating system and uh, the browser they have used to visit your website. Again, a very uh, clean uh, but yet powerful user interface to give you all the information you may need. Uh, the error log and access logs are tools that you will find very, very familiar. Uh, and you previously had at your disposal. And I will skip them going right to the devs category. Uh, starting with Git, um, um, an easy to use tool to create repositories. Uh, I believe our developer uh, users will appreciate it. You can uh, get the information about the repository right away, see which are the excluded uh, files and folders from it or quickly navigate to the SSH key manager to uh, uh, make sure your access is correct. The next two, cron jobs, um, uh, much improved uh, interface. Uh, you can schedule from here um, tasks to execute on a regular basis uh, and manage uh, notifications and set an email to receive um, uh, messages when that uh, action has been executed. This leads us to the PHP manager. And uh, here is something, uh, here is a tool where we have done, again, a tremendous work. Um, there are a few changes here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you select your uh, PHP version, not per folder, as you have been used to, but for domain. And um, this, uh, this is uh, something that's a, a great improvement because it, make it makes it much cleaner. Makes it, makes it impossible to do errors like copying uh, HD access files, let's say to a subfolder and then having your main uh, Joomla folder using PHP 7.3 while having your um, modules uh, directory working on 5.6, which leads to all sort of uh, unimaginable issues. Uh, changing the PHP version, you should have one version per website and this is how it works now. If you go to change the PHP version, you will notice that um, there are two options to change the PHP version manually, which is something you're familiar with. Uh, we uh, always uh, provide our customers with the latest PHP version and uh, up to five or six even versions back, depending on the ones we believe are still well supported and so on. The interesting part here is the ability to, to choose a managed PHP version um, this is the version basically that we select uh, for you based on the adoption rate of that particular um, version. 
uh, on our experience with uh, multiple applications working well. Um, because for example, right now, PHP 7.3 is the latest PHP version that we support, but our data shows that there's still uh, a lot of popular uh, apps, plugin extensions, uh, teams that have issues with it. So we haven't switched to 7.3 yet, but when we believe it's safe, we're going to switch over to 7.3. And by selecting this uh, managed PHP version, you're basically trusting us to select the proper one for you. Um, lastly, the SSH key manager. If you want to access your account uh, through SSH, uh, we allow you to do it securely only with an SSH uh, key. You can uh, generate a new key right away or you can uh, import an existing one. If you have it, just, uh, uh, just uh, go to the import tab and you will be able to paste your public, uh, public uh, key. If you want to manage the access to that key, you can, um, you can uh, do it uh, for each different key in the actions section. So for example, you can limit this key to be used only from your office. Uh, another thing on your right side, you will see uh, basically the username that you need to use to log in with that key once it's uh, imported uh, in your account, uh, the host name and the port that is a custom port uh, for, for all SiteGround accounts. So um, this is the last tool, but in site tools, and I will go back quickly to the client area because I really, really want to show you how the collaboration uh, functionality we have developed works. If you go under the websites tab and choose manage next to, to your website, you will see that there is a brand new users tab. Now, account isolation and site tools are, allows us to build a proper collaboration functionality to our product um, we have two different types of roles that you can um, grant access to your website. The first is the collaborator. Uh, we have developed and designed this uh, user role uh, for uh, those people who require, uh, let's say, help from an agency who want to hire a developer to work on their website or uh, a designer to... Um, change the looks of their pages. The collaborator has full access uh, to a site tool instance for that uh, site, but they will not be able to access the email functionality because a person that you hire to work on your website shouldn't be able to send emails on your behalf. Here is how a collabor collaborator screen looks. Uh, for example, um, they... Um, they get a uh, collaborator uh, client area. Uh, in this particular case, they don't have uh, a website, but in the collaboration tab, they will see all the websites that uh, this uh, collaborator user has access to. From here, they can quickly go to site tools. And as you can see, they have access to everything but the uh, email functionality. So back to my account, um, the, other, the other way to, uh, to give access to someone to your site is using the client role. Uh, doing this, uh, you will give a person access to a white labeled site tool. They will not get a client area. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, inherits uh, basically our reseller program. If you are managing the website to, for someone, um, the billing, etc., uh, you can add them as a client to your website. So they will get a white labeled site tools instance. This is what a collaborator would see. They have all the functionality. In yeah, sorry, uh, this is the client. They get only the site tools instance with the email functionality with everything without uh, uh, without a separate uh, SiteGround client area. 
As you can see, everything is white labeled. You will not see the SiteGround logo. And this includes our smart articles uh, section. If you click uh, on any of the articles, you will see that they are uh, white labeled too. So again, uh, you will not see any SiteGround logos here. So with this, I will end my screencast and uh, get back to me and Nikolai. So um, I, I really, I, I really hope that you enjoyed our um, our interfaces, and um, you are as enthusiastic uh, as we are to to start using them. Um, with this said, we have uh, we already have started signing uh, new customers on our shared plans to uh, to the new uh, Cytos. But uh, can you tell us more? what will happen to our existing customers, what the migration process will be, because uh, we already had a blog post about it. We have a lot of questions of people who are existing customers and they really want to know what will happen with their websites now. Uh, yeah, as you said, uh, a couple of months ago, ago we started to sign up, uh, uh, started to board uh, our new signups on the new platform. Not all of them, uh, it's only for shared uh, and only for English speaking customers yet, but soon we will also add uh, uh, the other regions. And soon we also uh, allow new quad orders or also to be signed sign up with the new platform. Uh, as to the existing customers, uh, um, the migration of the existing customers to the new platform uh, was one of the biggest challenge that we <laughs> that we faced during the, building the new tools. And we've been working on it for almost a year already, uh, working on scripts that would autom automate all the process uh, without breaking or interfering in any way the functionality of any website that we migrate to the new platform. Um, the other good thing about it is that the migration itself would be uh, very seamless. Uh, it will uh, uh, it will require a minimum or non down or minimum or very short downtime. It really depends on the on the size of the of the of the account that that is being migrated. And uh, another very cool thing is that it will require no action from the customer which means there will be no IP address change, no name server change, nothing. Uh, the, the websites will just start working from the new platform. This is great for the SEO of our customers and uh, the fact that uh, they don't have to change name servers yeah. and so on, I, I really hope will be a relief for, yeah. for a lot of people. Uh, when, would, uh, when will the migration start? <laughs> Uh, we plan the first migration to start uh, in the middle of septem September. Uh, the first migration will include, include a very small batch of customers. And uh, we will start very slowly with small batches to, to make sure that uh, we don't <laughs> break anything. Uh, That's always a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll start with very small batches. And after each migration, every single website will be manually checked by our technicians to make sure that um, everything is intact, no data is lost, and everything is working working as it should be. Uh, still, we would uh, really uh, ask uh, the customers who are scheduled for the migration to just postpone any major changes during the date of the migration. So everyone will receive an email dedicated yeah. specifically for that migration process, and. Uh, you, once you get that email in it, you will find the exact date that your particular server will be migrated. Uh, as Nikolai said, we will do this uh, server by server, uh, very slowly, manually checking the websites in the beginning uh, until we are 100% sure that the scripts we are running are safe for you, will not bring any hassle, any uh, further complication uh, for your uh, working process, basically, and in your websites. Yeah. So um, I think that uh, we basically covered everything that we wanted to. Uh, it's time to, uh, to press uh, the big red button saying that we have a lot of questions. Uh, OK, I'm starting with the easiest one. As I said, this will be recorded. And um, 
in addition to that, we'll add a blog post in the SiteGround um, in the SiteGround blog, in which we'll answer the questions that we didn't have time to today. Um, another question like that. Uh, okay, let's answer this one. Oh, okay. Let's let's. Uh, I will read the question. Uh, so we have it on the video recording. It's by Cogit Active. Uh, by removing cPanel and Softaculous, you suppress two free backup solutions uh, uh, out of the three server level independent options available. The third option being manual backup, FTP, and PHP admin. What tools will replace these two convenient methods in the new site tools? Other than the SiteGround backup tool, which is neither independent of SiteGround's infrastructure or free. He, uh, he means the on-demand backups for the startup one. Yeah, uh, in the site tools, uh, there are all the necessary tools that uh, every customer needs in order to download his data and emails. Uh, those tools are such like uh, the FTP, SSH, the PHP My Admin is also there. Uh, you can download a backup of your databases as well. Uh, well, still, uh, uh, on the table of discussions, we have that eventually to provide uh, a new tool that would allow you to to download all your data with us in an easy and, and uh, with a single click. And uh, so, yeah, that's the answer to that. Yeah, to, uh, one more thing I would like to add is that um, uh, one thing um, uh, our customer asks is um, probably because it's uh, of the about the SiteGround infrastructure. But I want to mention quickly here that uh, we, the backups that we do with our backup tools, uh, the content is not saved on the same server. So if uh, for whatever reason there are issues with that machine, we have it on a separate, completely se separate server at your disposal. So I, I really hope that this answers your question well. Yeah, and of course, uh, customers need easy way to download their, their data and we do understand that. So. Uh, we eventually would uh, provide a tool that would allow that. Well, yeah, we, we, we are monitoring customer demand very, very closely. We're reading all the commands, uh, all the information that you give us back. Uh, at this point, we don't have that functionality on a button, but as Nikolai said, we, we discuss it uh, and uh, we already have a roadmap of things to add. And this is uh, one of those things. We have a question from Carol. Is the reseller program going to be canceled? I need information about how this is going to be migrated uh, because I will no longer be able to set the price for my clients. Please advise. Uh, as to the reseller program, it won't be canceled, but it, it will be changed the way it works. Uh, first, first of all, we, we will discontinue the so-called credits but we will replace those credits with the discounted price for the startup accounts. Uh, all the remaining uh, customer, reseller customers uh, will be able to continue to use the, the, the credits that they still have in their accounts. They will still be able to renew existing uh, reseller accounts, uh, hosting accounts, or but they won't, uh, they will be able to start new accounts with the existing uh, credits, but they won't be able to, to buy new credits. And as I said, those credits will be replaced with a discounted price for the startup accounts. And the idea, uh, and uh, this is uh, another way of how our resource can work now. Yeah. Uh, in Carol's case, so and where she's setting the uh, the billing price for her customers, uh, what, what she can do is just add them as clients to to existing account that she has, yeah. and they will get a white labeled set of tools. They will uh, they will basically get uh, a website management tool mm -hmm. rather than a SiteGround hosting account, which, yeah. which I believe is better than what what everybody previous, previously had. Um, another, I'm sorry if I'm staggering, but uh, the questions move a bit too fast. Uh, mm -hmm. um, another question about when do, 
I think we answered the question, when do users migrate to the new dashboard? We're starting very slowly in September, in the middle of September, and we will gradually proceed on server. Yeah, I server. just want to add to that, that we will start only with the shared yes. uh, accounts. And once uh, all the shared accounts are migrated, uh, then we will um, uh, move to the cloud and dedicated servers. Yes, this is a very, very good addition. I, I don't know, I, I'm somehow assuming that everybody has a shared account. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. We will start with shared accounts and we'll, once we finish with them, we make sure everything is okay, perfectly working. Uh, only then we'll move to uh, cloud accounts. Uh, uh, another question from uh, Till Lawson, will Cpanel continue to exist or we will do it all in the new panel? Uh, our plan is to completely discontinue cPanel, which means that every single uh, customer of ours will be moved to the new platform. So at the end, there will be no cPanel offered to our clients. Yes, uh, someone, some uh, clients of ours maybe migrated earlier than others, but eventually we'll move all our infrastructure uh, to the new site tools platform. Uh, a question from Edith Allison, uh, uh, PHP, PHP admin is still there. Yes, it's just located in the MySQL tool under the PHP admin tab. Uh, you will find it there. It's working the way it was before. Um, <laughs> Nikolai, again, you're asking a lot of questions. They're moving. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, a question about Becky Regal. I hope that I don't mispronounce your names. If I do this, I apologize beforehand. How will account executions be displayed per website? Uh, the account because the account executions are ac accounted uh, per hosting account, not per website. Uh, the statistics about the account executions and the CPU time that those executions consume are located under the client area, under the the services uh, tab. Uh, there you can find the total account executions and CPU seconds uh, consumed for the entire hosting account, and at the same place you will see uh, that. Um, uh, uh, every particular website, the usage of every particular website, uh, every website. And uh, this is another good addition, uh, another uh, good example for a benefit uh, why we uh, focused on the websites and why we separated the websites as uh, independent uh, instances is because uh, in the back with, uh, in, the, in the past with the, with the hosting accounts, uh, when you uh, w when you see that you have a certain amount of uh, uh, executions consumed, you don't know which of the websites exactly. Uh, yeah, you consumed. have to go and yeah. check the scripts, but if it's an add-on, it's in some folder, yeah. you need to figure out which website causes that, that load. Now you know exactly which website consumes most of the hosting account resources. And I actually showed this in the beginning of the screencast. You can uh, go to services and click on the manage button next to your uh, uh, hosting accounts with us. And um, you can go navigate to the statistics tab and you will see all that information in a very friendly and easy to uh, analyze way. Let's, uh, let's quickly go to another question from Vadim Rob. How can you migrate email accounts from or to cPanel hosts? Uh, how can you migrate email accounts from or to cPanel hosting account? Uh, uh, the easiest way and uh, the way that we advise our customers to do it is uh, by doing this with the IMAP protocol. Okay. Uh, in, in our knowledge base articles, you will find uh, uh, an article that explains the exact process on how to, you can do that. Of course, our technical support representatives can also help you if you are transferring to SiteGround and uh, assist you on transferring transferring your emails. Okay, so using IMAP, like like the way, for example, you would do with, if you have a 
Google Mail account yeah, yeah. is uh, is the right way to do it. I used to do it a lot of way, a lot of times. Sorry, it works. I can <laughs> confirm that. <laughs> um, I have a question from Tim. Can you provide a best practice guide for agencies on how to set up uh, and configure a customer projects, also including legal best practices when handling customer data, private data, payment details, migrating emails, accounts, etc. Uh, thank you, Tim, for, for that question. We really plan on producing a lot more content, uh, probably another webinar specifically um, targeting uh, agencies, uh, freelancers, uh, people who do more websites. And uh, I really hope we will come up with, soon we will come up with more content, um, both uh, static on the website and interactive uh, on how to get the most out of uh, our new plant area and the new site tools instance. I have um, a question uh, from Moira. I think that one will be for you. I have multiple SiteGround clients, each owning their hosting account, but I'm the maintenance person. How can I get notified when this is happening for each one of them? Uh, let me, I didn't really get the questions in the first place. So, so. Moira has, okay, you're reading it. Uh, If I understand the question correctly, uh, now every, sing, uh, every customer of yours can invite you as a collaborator. Uh, when you get invited as a collaborator, you get uh, two types of notification. One is uh, uh, on to your email address and the another one is a notification on the dashboard of the client area. From there, you can accept every single invitation and once you accept the invitations, you do get the access to their website uh, site tools, uh, as uh, Christo showed you, without access to their email accounts and settings. So the main approach of this would be to uh, ask uh, ask them, or if you have access to your account, to add your your profile as a collaborator. To those yeah, in people. order to become a collaborator, uh, you should be invited to become such. Yes. <laughs> you cannot request it. <laughs> this is not something that we can automate and uh, we can't know who has access to what website if it's not a separate client. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have one question with, from uh, Pantelis. Uh, resellers, resellers, please speak and explain the process for resellers. So far in the new platform, there is no operation date for no expiration date for new client website. What will uh, it have for that? Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, with the new platform, there will be still no expiration time for the for the website. Uh, of course, there is expiration time for the for the hosting account, uh, but uh, which uh, there is auto new and so on. But for the website itself, there is no expiration time. Uh, as a reseller, you will be able to suspend and uh, unsuspend the website, the single website, not the hosting account. And uh, also you will see an exact date uh, when the website was created. So, you know, uh, you have more information on, uh, on it. Uh, so generally, we will generally there is not a big change for them. Besides discontinuing the reseller, uh, the reseller credits, there is not, there is not a big change for them. Yeah, credits is something that our resellers have been uh, asking us to improve, to change, to update as a system, and this is what we're doing right now. We're still giving them access to uh, to to do the workflow they want to do. Uh, to resell websites because this is at the end of the day this is what what you want to do you want to resell a website uh, whether you're going to spin off a new startup account for that uh, client of yours or if you want to keep a cloud server or a go geek account and install multiple websites under it and then add those clients as clients in the cooperation tab it's up to you. So uh, I really believe that now things are much better and more uh, flexible for our resellers to, to, to use. Yeah, some uh, resellers might uh, consider using a single GoGeek account, which provides you with an unlimited number of websites. And you can create uh, uh, many websites under the same account and provide those website access to different clients of yours. 
Well, I wouldn't advise you to do that because they would share the same resources of that hosting yes. account. So yeah, uh, it's better to use startup accounts with a single site and yeah. Yeah, this is one way or another. It, uh, those are just cases I know from, from real life scenarios, <laughs> how, how people, sometimes people, it's uh, funny how people use our services in a ways that uh, we need to <laughs> analyze and see to, to actually believe uh, it is it is happening. Uh, Okay, uh, next, uh, next, next question. I will try to get one of the new ones. Uh, uh, what are, oops, what are, oops, it disappeared. You are something asking happened. questions so fast that they're moving to the to the top. Uh, this is something Crowdcast should probably improve in their interfaces. Um, uh, to uh, a question from Sandra. To all the sites I've published and handled over and provided cPanel logins and FTP credentials, will I have to go back and tell them that they no longer can use those logins? Uh, well, uh, the 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 migration, when we were building the, the scripts that would migrate uh, from uh, cPanel to our new platform, uh, one of the biggest time for us was not to use any kind of configuration and things like that. Uh, so the FTP accounts will be migrated the same way as uh, they were configured on, on, the, cPanel, uh, on the cPanel account. Uh, uh, for, uh, we will also for the for the resellers because we know that resellers provide uh, the the cpanel credentials to their customers uh we will also uh, uh, automatically create for every website the same username the same credentials that uh, that the resellers client used to use to log into cpanel so he will use the same credential to log into to the white labeled version of uh site tools Okay, I, I I think that answers Sander Sandra's questions. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I can't skip that one. Are you going to fix uh, the round cube email so we can uh, format our emails using bold, italize, etc. Format and our signature? <laughs> this is this has been a hot topic, right? We we're working mm -hmm. on uh, something interesting here. Uh, uh, no uh first of all first of all i am not very familiar with the issues that the round cube itself has <laughs> uh the, we provide our uh, in the site tools we provide access to round cube webmail uh and uh but the round cube itself comes as is i mean <laughs> we're we're not developing uh the, yeah, it's the it's, it's a third party webmail application. Uh, we we provide it. It's there for your convenience. Uh, if you want the full functionality of an email, I would recommend setting up a mobile app, whatever you prefer, on your Mac, Windows, or mobile phone to to use. Uh, a great question from Janel Star: What will happen to existing add-on domains? Uh, every single add-on domain would become a website. Uh, and you will see those websites in your client area under the website tab. Uh, meaning that if you have a, currently have a single hosting account with let's say 20 add-on domains, th uh, those add-on domains will be split, split it into separate websites under the same hosting account. And all of those will, be, will have their own site, site tools and et cetera. So as I, as I showed during the screencast, I had uh, two websites installed, the edu webinar with demo one and one with temporary domain name. Uh, on the website tab, you will see all the add-ons that you previously had. This mm -hmm. is where you will find them. But they will no longer be a mere folder in your account. They will be uh, uh, separate real websites with their own site tools instance. And uh, say, uh, this here is an account uh, from AJ. 
when using the new site transfer function, does this transaction on the client side of things get credited to your affiliate account automatically? Uh, if you're uh, if you're registered as SiteGround affiliate, uh, affiliate uh, you will be credited for uh, websites that you transfer ownerships to. Uh, this is something that we are currently working on. So if you're a brand new customer, uh, um, affiliate of ours, and uh, you do this, uh, please make sure you contact our affiliate team uh, the regular way. So because we're still doing it manually, but this is something that uh, will be um, added to the product uh, shortly. Um, let's choose another questions, question to answer from uh, the list of quickly moving around questions. How do you access the control panel? Uh, again, uh, if you don't mind, I will answer that one. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, the new, the new uh, client area is the single login. Uh, if you're owner of that profile, owner of that account, of those accounts, uh, you have a single login to, to my siteground.com and from there you can access the site tools instance for each individual website uh, that you have. Um, of course, uh, if you're a client, in case we're talking about uh, the client collaboration role, uh, you'll get a username and password and a white labeled URL as I showed you previously in screencast. So again, a single login from your client area to each individual site tools instance. Yeah, I just want to add something to that. If you want to directly directly go to, to, to the site tools, keeping the client area, you can go to tools.siteground.com and uh, you have to enter the same credential, credentials as your client area and you will be locked to the site tools, skipping the client area. Yeah, it's the same login, but you can go right away from tools.siteground.com. Yeah. yeah. I will make sure to add this to the blog post so people know the shortcut right away. Um, Will uh, Brett asks we will send us an email of this tutorial so we can review it as many times as necessary. Again, there will be a blog post. Uh, we will add to it a recording of the webinar that you can watch it uh, whenever uh, the time zone is suitable for you. You have the time scroll and watch it as many times as you need. Um, A question from Matt, will you be able to open more than one website dashboard in the same browser? I no. Nope. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, uh, we got a question, although, although a bit difficult to decipher. I, I, I think uh, what, what uh, he asks is whether you'll be able to open uh, different titles in different tabs under the same account, or am I wrong? Uh, not under the same browser. Uh, when you... Uh, you cannot have, uh, you cannot, it will, it, at the end, it will be a mess. Let's say it that way. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, our new interfaces. They're all um, single page applications. So yeah, this uh, is how the simple page applications, like how they share a local, uh, local storage uh, on, in your browser. And if you try to uh, manipulate different websites under, opened under different tabs, uh, tabs and uh, it will be, at the end, it will be some kind of a real mess. So I wouldn't advise you that. You can use incognito mode. But yeah, private tabs, private yeah. tabs will work, yeah. but uh, then private tab, they, you know, they keep the session until you close the tab. If that works for you, feel free to use it. Um, if, if this is the way you- Yeah, and the single it. page applications are completely state stateless. There are no cookies and sessions. And if you read the technical blog post that we've created about our site tools, etc., you there you will find um, a very interesting information on the authentication methods that we use for our new interfaces. Yeah, Nikolai actually did a very, very good blog post. I, uh, I read uh, uh, with a lot of interest because um, he really goes a bit deeper into the technical details of uh, the entire project we've been wor working on for, what, three years? Uh, and um, 
going uh, single page up is something that um, brings tons of benefits but again as everything has certain limitations so i hope that this answers your question um uh, is there an eta a question by Tan guy h is there an eta when new client area will be available for cloud hosting customers uh once we roll out all shared and then we will uh, start with the cloud uh, hosting customers but uh, if you have at least one shared account uh, and uh, in your in your current client area to be, together with uh, uh, with an cloud hosting account and the shared account uh, gets migrated to the new interfaces then you will get the new client area uh, and the cloud hosting account will be there but still with uh, cpanel and our hm so yeah initially we will not uh, migrate cpanel to sitos right away yeah but if you but we will migrate the cloud account yeah because we will be migrating server by server yeah. uh there is a great chance that some uh, customers have uh multiple hosting accounts spread across different servers and when we migrate a single of those accounts to the new interfaces all of the rest uh, uh he will get instant access to the new client area but still the uh, the accounts that are not uh, migrated to site tools they're still being managed by cpanel so kind of we have cpanel integration in, into our new client area yeah <laughs> one of the things we had to do in order to provide with a smooth migration process and i i hope that answers your question uh tangai uh question by art boyle can you still upload plugins in the file manager yes as uh, as i mentioned briefly in the screencast uh you can upload files uh, as big as 128 megs right now, but we are planning to shortly completely removing that limitation. And it's very cool that the new file manager also supports drag and drop. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to just drag and drop those uh, those files. Uh, okay, uh, a question uh, uh, from Mitch. Uh, what about Joomla? Where is the Joomla tools? Uh, very good question. <laughs> uh, we sort of had it coming. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning when we decided that we will rework and redesign uh, all our interfaces and rework our platform, uh, we very thoroughly invest, uh, analyzed the usage of every single tool uh, that our customers, uh, that we are providing. Uh, and uh, we saw a very, uh, uh, very small interest and very small usage of the of the Joomla tools. Uh, that is why some of those tools were we decided to completely discontinue, and other tools we decided just to uh, to be uh, with a lower priority in our roadmap. Uh, one of those tools uh, that is currently work in progress and will be available inside tools in, in a month, I guess, or sooner, is the Joomla Auto Update tool. Uh, as to the other Joomla tool, uh, the Joomla staging one, um, we are working on a, something that would replace it. We are working on, a, as, actually, it's a concept yet. We are working on a tool that would be CMS agnostic that would allow you to uh, easily create a clone of your uh, Joomla or any other application that powers your website where you can test out uh, like new extensions or upgrades or something like that. So the Joomla staging tool would be replaced with something similar. Uh, so the rest of the Joomla tools though, because due to the very uh, small adoption from our customers, we, we decided to, to, to discontinue them. Okay, I I think that this answers uh, this question. I'm sorry, I'm a bit slow with the question selection, uh, but uh, you are asking a lot of questions and they're moving uh, really fast for me. I don't know why. Uh, question for Remco: uh, Does File Manager have a search function? Yeah, this is in the roadmap. Okay, <laughs> another thing that uh, we'll be adding: there yeah. is a search and search and replace in the uh, file editor but if you're asking whether there is a search for 
file this is something that we're working on yeah we have some great uh, ideas and features in the roadmap uh, that are uh, related to the file manager but i'm not gonna spo spoil anything today well, honestly <laughs> by now we were kind of limited by cpanel in terms of what we can do for interfaces for new functionality i'm i'm kind of scared of what you guys are gonna think of uh upstairs <laughs> for for the upcoming month in terms of, of new stuff so yes stay tuned for uh, search functionality in the file manager uh, much easier than um, having to search for a file using uh, SSH for example um, I see that a lot of people ask for a t-shirt right now um, <laughs> only SiteGround <laughs> please have one but I would say uh, check out the event pages, uh, the event page of SiteGround and our social media. Uh, we pop up um, around the globe on all, basically all open source events. And this is a great uh, way, a uh, place to find awesome SiteGround uh, swag. Okay, uh, another, another question. Uh, it's from L Draper. Someone in the command section suggested that it would be advisable not to build new websites until the migration to the new interface is done. Is that correct? I probably add one new client per week, always WordPress, so I can't afford to queue them up. Uh, well, that depends whether this new client is a new uh, hosting account or just a new alum domain. So uh, if you add those new websites to to the to our single cpanel account which is scheduled for uh, migration uh just please don't do that during the day of the migration yes yeah, so, so you receive an email with the exact date of the migration uh when it will happen so since you're spinning up let's say any website uh, for um, once uh, once a week i would just recommend uh, just don't do it the same day uh always stay on the safe side I doubt that there's gonna be any downtime or issues, but uh, if there is something that you can avoid risking, I would recommend always, always sparing the risk. Uh, another another questions about add-on domains that we have already answered. Uh, ooh, a tough one from uh, Swelly for you. When do you think you'll be migrating the last servers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, actually, I'm being asked that question pretty much every day. <laughs> uh, but I still don't have the, 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 the definite answer to that. We need to see how the first migration will go before we can give any ETA when we will finish it with all the, the current hosting accounts that we have. Uh, well, we have some interesting numbers, uh, which uh, like uh, uh, we measured how much time on average takes for a cPanel account to be converted to the new uh, to the new site tools and the new interfaces, and the average time was like something two minutes. Oh. So we can cool. do like a rough est estimation how much time would we need, but still I wouldn't uh, name. Or anything like yeah, a fun fact, 11 years ago when I started working for SiteGround, actually Nikolai was the person on my job interview. <laughs> <laughs> so so now me throwing <laughs> tough questions at him is just, just a little payback of us small people. And uh, I, I will not be sparing them, don't, don't worry. Um, okay, uh, next, next question, uh, Nancy. Mikiska, how do we put a new website add-on in, in our existing GoKick account? Uh, this is very, very, very easy process. You start with the website, again, part of our website-centric philosophy. You log into your client area uh, to the website tab and then click add new website. If you have multiple accounts, you'll get the ability to choose in which account you will uh, install that new website. And then you get uh, prompted to choose whether you, you want to use a temporary domain name, register a new one, or use an existing one. So 
it's not we we're completely removing uh, the term add-on slots now every single website gets its own site tools instance um, with all the set of features and functionalities that you need to manage it uh next to the uh more people asking for recording uh, uh a questions from Mikal. how will it all work using fazio to access all the websites files i host on an account will I have on one place like now or we will have to access each one of those websites separately uh yes uh you will have to access each of uh, those websites separately uh having a proper website isolation is a huge security improvement and uh, we strongly believe that this is the way individual websites should be managed in filezilla you can add number of profiles uh to your interface you can add each one of your add-on sites and literally with a double click log into each one of them so uh i think that uh, the benefits you're getting from having much more secure environment are far more than um, the convenience of having everything under the, the same folder and same account. Um, where another question from Robin, where I can I find CPU and execution stat? I think you already answered that one there in your client area. Uh, uh, services under the manage screen for that particular hosting account. Um, oops a question i haven't quite answered a uh, question from eric larson uh, where are the backup tools and schedule that are part of cpanel are located now um again something i showed in the screencast there in the security tab under the backups too um wow we have we have a lot of a lot of questions um i i'm trying to i'm trying <laughs> to answer more questions and not uh not once from from the same person uh, uh how, again how to manage the main names i think we explained that a uh, number of number of times so uh, a uh, question from random i guess it's a random question <laughs> i often use uh, file manager to clean staging backup or remove files so my node usage uh, would lower sooner than later how would i do it with file manager that only sees public hopefully there will be an advanced file manager view i oh the customer asks about the staging copies uh, which uh, which used to be located in a system folder Mm -hmm. uh named dot staging in the in the home folder for that account uh honestly i think that with the new site tools uh what uh mr random used to use uh <laughs> wouldn't be necessary anymore uh but no we don't want any advanced uh, mode for of the file manager that would allow you access to the to the home folder uh, itself, uh, because the, the sole purpose of the file manager is to give you access to your file websites, not to the files that are system-wise. Uh, yeah, of course, too, you can do that with FTP or SSH, or you can, uh, I don't know, you can set up a cron job to automate this job. <laughs> really yeah, and if you, want to if you want to clear a staging copy for your website, you can simply destroy a staging copy and uh, our system will take care of the, all the cleanup. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah, I, I, I need to know, to be able to, to give a definite answer to this question, I really need to know the exact, exact case. Yeah, I have to say we are now guessing what, what, what the customer means, but uh, yeah, this is, if, if you're deleting staging copies, do it from the interface, it's much cleaner and will take care of all the data for, for that staging that you're destroying. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's have uh, let's have uh, uh, let's have uh, one more question to answer, and then uh, 
we'll answer the rest uh, of, the, of your questions in uh, blog posts that we will release uh, the upcoming week. Uh, we'll go through each one of them, uh, and I think we'll not leave any question unanswered. But uh, we're getting 105 more new ones, so we won't be able to uh, answer all of them live. But we will do this in a blog post uh, that will, again, I'm saying this, um, will release later uh, next week and we'll add a recording of the webinar. So I, I already clicked on Katie's uh, question. I have set up a several clients with SiteGround account. They're running the DV team. I'm having issues with the SG caching plugin right now in the new interface. It looks like SG caching is now part of the system. What about conflicts with DV teams? Uh, have you done any testing with Page Builder and the new system? Uh, yes, I picked this um, particular question because we are uh, working on uh, an update of the SG Optimizer. Uh, I would urge you to go to the WordPress.org support forum for our plugin and report that issue. Uh, as part of our testing uh, process uh, for new SG Optimizer version, uh, we go through all the major um, page builders for WordPress, including DB, Elementor, um, Beaver Builder, and a uh, few others. I don't want to name them all, so I don't miss anything. Uh, and yeah, we do put a lot of work to making that plugin more of a complete uh, performance optimization solution rather than a simple caching connector. But uh, with us introducing a lot more features to it, there it increases the chance of conflicts uh, in certain cases. Uh, I'm sure we have tested with DV and works great, but uh, open a ticket, we'll look into your particular case, uh, patch it, and if uh, there's a problem, we're gonna, we're gonna fix it right away. So uh, thank you very much for um, watching, um, watching our webinar. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, I really hope that you will use our client area and site tools uh, and it will help you out with uh, your workflows, with your day-to-day -day work uh, of managing websites and um, eventually you will enjoy it more, more than our existing old interfaces. And thank you, Nikolai, for answering. Yeah, it was a pleasure to answer. I, I, I'm really sorry that we couldn't answer all the questions, but but yeah, as you said, we answer all them. We have to eventually get back to our families and <laughs> kiss our wives. So thank you very much again. Uh, have a great day or night, uh, whenever uh, time it is uh, in your place. Uh, there will be a recording of the webinar. Again, I'm saying this for the last time and uh, blog post with a list of the unanswered questions. Uh, Goodbye and have a bye. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs>